Hello, I'm Michael Fry, and in this video we're going to take a look at the new Profile Browser in Lightroom Classic CC. Now profiles are nothing new. Every raw file needs to have a profile to translate the raw data into the colors and tones that you see on your screen. And ever since Lightroom 2, Adobe has given us some choices about which profiles to use. Only those choices have been hidden down in the camera calibration panel at the bottom of the develop module. So this is an older version of Lightroom and you can see an option here for profile and a pull down menu with some different choices. When you're choosing a raw profile you're essentially choosing different flavors of color. You know some of these profiles have more contrast, some less, uh, some more saturation or less. Uh, the colors or the hues might shift slightly. Now I'm going to switch over to a more recent version of Lightroom and in Lightroom Classic CC versions 7.3 and up the profiles are at the top of the basic panel right here which I think is a better place for them. You know I think choosing a profile is a fundamental step that you probably should do early on in your workflow. So it's nice to see profiles getting a more prominent spot here in the develop module. Now if I click on this pull down menu I'll once again see a bunch of choices for different profiles. These are different than the ones that we saw before. These profiles are the ones that are on my favorites list and I'll show you how to add and subtract profiles from this list here in a bit. Now you can see more choices, many more choices for profiles by clicking on browse down here or clicking on the four little rectangles over here to get into the profile browser. Now within the profile browser you'll find different sections. There are favorites, so those are the things on the favorites list that we saw before. Adobe Raw. Here you'll find the Adobe Standard Profile which has been the default profile for most cameras for many years but you'll also find several new Adobe profiles Adobe Color, Monochrome, Landscape, Neutral, Portrait and Vivid. Now the new default profile is Adobe Color. Images that you've previously imported into Lightroom will keep the profile that you had originally because changing the profile would change the appearance of the image but any new images that you import if you haven't changed the default profile for a particular camera or you're not using an import preset that changes the profile, we'll use Adobe Color to start with as the default profile. Now one thing you'll notice is that when I scroll over these different profiles, Lightroom gives me a full screen preview of what that profile looks like over here. And that kind of threw me when I first started using the new profile browser because I thought that it was actually applying those profiles, but it's not. It's just giving you a preview as I roll my mouse over these different profiles over here in the browser. It's giving me a preview and the name of the profile shows up briefly on the screen over the image. But I still have the Adobe Standard profile selected here. Okay, It says Adobe Standard here, has a white box around it here. If I slide my mouse over the Adobe Landscape profile in the browser here. It shows me what that will look like, but if I take my mouse off of that and put it over the image or somewhere else, then it shows the image to me with the Adobe Standard Profile that I have selected applied. That's not going to change until and unless I click on another profile. So now I actually clicked on the Adobe Landscape Profile. You can see the white line around it and it says Adobe Landscape up here. Also, if I want to add one of these profiles to my favorites list, I can click on the little star in the upper right hand corner here in the profile browser. So Adobe Portrait is not in my favorites list right now, but if I click on the star, it now will be. I can go to favorites up here and see Adobe Portrait in there. Or if I close the browser and use the pull down menu here, I'll also see Adobe Portrait there. Now I'm going to go back to the browser and down to the Adobe Raw Profiles and click on that star again next to Adobe Portrait to remove it from the favorites list. Underneath the Adobe Raw section is the camera matching section. 
These are profiles that we had available before to us down in the camera calibration panel. And these camera matching profiles are designed to mimic the look of different picture styles that are available in your camera. So this photo was taken with a Sony a7R II and these options here therefore reflect the different options that are available in that camera. Sony calls these creative styles so there's camera clear, camera deep, landscape, light, neutral, portrait, and so on. When you select one of those options in the camera it only affects the look of JPEGs. RAW files aren't affected at all. So what Adobe has done with these camera matching profiles is to give you a RAW profile that mimics the look of those picture styles in your camera. So now Sony calls them creative styles, Canon calls them picture styles, and you'll see if you're using a Canon camera different options here because Canon has different options in their camera menus. On Nikon's it's called uh, picture control or set picture control and again there are going to be different options than you see here. All the options again are just designed to mimic the look of those styles in your camera. Underneath that are profiles which you won't see unless you have some custom profiles like I do. So these are custom profiles that I've made with the X-Rite Color Checker Passport. And underneath that are legacy profiles. These are black and white versions of either custom profiles or the camera matching profiles and Adobe Standard. Now if I close that section I'll see a little line underneath there and that separates the raw profiles which are in this section from what Adobe calls the creative profiles which are down below. Raw profiles can only be applied to raw files. Creative profiles can be applied to any file type JPEGs, TIFFs, and RAW files as well. If I open up these different sections and roll my mouse over some of these, you can see what they look like. They're a little bit different, not as natural looking. There's a black and white section, of course, and I'll talk more about black and white profiles later. Uh, modern, vintage, etc. And one of the differences between these creative profiles and the RAW profiles up here is that when you have a RAW profile selected, you won't see an amount slider. So right now I have the Adobe Landscape profile selected and there's no amount slider underneath that. But if I select one of these so-called creative profiles, let's try this one, the Artistic 01, I see an amount slider. So I can adjust the strength of the effect from this profile. I can take it down to where it has little or no effect or push the amount slider up and that increases the effect. Now if I take this down all the way to zero, that's essentially the same as having the Adobe Color profile selected for a raw image. So if I go up to the Adobe Color profile and select that, then undo that last step. So now we're back to the Artistic 01 profile with the amount at zero. They look essentially the same. So again, here's Adobe Color and here's Artistic 01 with the amount at zero and I can't tell the difference. So that's a basic overview of how the new profile browser works. Next I'm going to talk about how to choose a raw profile for a color image and then I'll talk about using profiles for black and white images. The way Lightroom does black and white conversions has completely changed with version 7.3 of Lightroom Classic, so we'll talk about that as well.